Good afternoon once again. Today is uh, Monday, the, I'm sorry, Tuesday, uh, the 19th of January 2021. I'll start off with uh, the summary that uh, Dr. Tuisin, the spokesperson, had uh, delivered just, just now. It's very important. Starting off, of course, with the premise that vaccines will build a lot of more immunity, stronger immunity for, for us. Now, uh, Thailand, like many other countries around the world, uh, some have procured, some have received the delivery of vaccines. The clinical trials are very important to ensure the efficacy, the uh, verify the, the confidence in the vaccines that we will be receiving. Now, in terms of timeline, it, whether it's uh, next month as planned, or for some countries later on this year or next year as planned, as, as planned or not planned. Now, now that's about the vaccines. But the point is that with the understanding that vaccines build immunity, the more, the more important uh, issue right now, the, the real vaccine right now, that we should be focusing on, of course, is on the preventive measures, our own personal uh, protection uh, against uh, COVID which we have been talking about for uh, many, many uh, times uh, already. So not, notwithstanding the arrival of, of the vaccines, the preventive measures, the DMHTT, and all of these things that we do to take care of each other are even more important uh, right, right now in order to prevent the spread of uh, COVID. And in the meanwhile, the vaccine, clinical uh, trials, the procurement, the distribution, that will be uh, forthcoming. The spokesperson also said, talked about the uh, general situation uh, in uh, Thailand. We're in three points of uh, concern. Uh, first is, of course, the uh, cluster in Samut Sakon, which had hit, hit us uh, at you know, the end of December until uh, today, which is called the uh, new wave. Now, the second point is in Bangkok, the cluster in Bangkok. And the third is the situation in our neighboring countries. So these uh, three areas are basically what will determine um, how and when and how fast we will be able to contain the new wave of COVID in Thailand. I'll move on to the general situation and the number of uh, cases that we have for today. For today, we have 171 uh, new cases, most of which 125 to be exact of which are from active case finding, 33 from local transmission, and 13 from within the state quarantine system. As per the active case, the current active case that we have at the moment in Thailand, we have 3,168. So a little above 3,000 cases uh, of persons uh, still having COVID in Thailand. The cumulative number from the very beginning of last year until uh, now, uh, the cumulative number that we have is 12,594, as you can see on screen. Uh, recoveries, new recoveries, 150. The total cumulative recoveries is 9,356. But of course, the key number for today is a little bit over 3,000 people uh, still remain with COVID in, in Thailand and, of course, being treated in the appropriate medical facilities. No uh, additional fatalities. Some observations from the presentation by the spokesperson just now. Firstly, is about the active uh, case finding, which we will continue uh, to carry out uh, this mission. Uh, active case findings will be continued uh, in the various factories uh, in Thailand. We will also be focusing on around 600 uh, factories per, per day, at least with uh, 50 target uh, targets, uh, 50 checkups uh, at each, at each uh, factory, depending, of course, on the number of people in each factory. So that makes around 30,000 uh, targeted uh, cases through active case finding uh, per, per day. So, so you see uh, some images on, on screen of uh, the officials conducting uh, temperature checks and uh, performing their uh, checks and everything uh, in various factories that have been in our target. So uh, the spokesperson also showed a, a map of the n number of factories uh, in Sakon province. Uh, so there is that plan to go to all of the factories and conduct this active case uh, finding from uh, time to time in order to root out and uh, bring out the number of cases that are hidden that uh, would, wouldn't otherwise uh, be, be known if not for active case uh, finding in, in Thailand. <clears throat> so 
the, in the general picture, um, there still remains 61 provinces infected uh, with infected persons, uh, same number as yesterday. The spokesperson also talked about uh, a particular district in, in Bangkok, uh, which is on the western side of Bangkok. It's called Bang Khun Tien. So Bang Khun Tien district is actually one district in Bangkok which has found um, the most number of infected persons in, in Bangkok, uh, partly due to the uh, existence of uh, pubs and bars uh, in, in that area, which are actually frequented by persons coming from uh, nearby provinces or uh, provinces in the vicinity of, of Bangkok. So Bang Khun Tien in the western part of Bangkok, on uh, the map that was displayed, it was in a darker color, I think darker purple. Um, the southern provinces also was mentioned by uh, Dr. Thuy Sin, wherein as while we still have not a high uh, number of uh, risk in the southern provinces as compared to other regions, the southern provinces still have to be on a very, how shall, how shall I say, a vigilant uh, lookout uh, because of the high number of cases daily in our neighboring country in, in Malaysia, around three to 4,000 4, uh, cases daily in Malaysia. So they would have to be on the lookout. The active case finding, the strict uh, screening, uh, rather, has been performed in uh, points of entry, uh, for example, in Hat Yai. Uh, airport in uh, uh, in southern Thailand, as as well as other points of entry uh, in the southern region. So, moving on to the uh, additional information that I'll be providing. First is about the uh, economic impact of the wave. So, despite the new wave, the Bank of Thailand has come out with, uh, they had a media uh, briefing the other day, and they came out with an estimation that the economic impact of the situation will be more or less uh, milder than that of the first uh, wave, the first outbreak. So the Bank of Thailand uh, stressed that although uh, in this new wave, the uh, COVID is spreading faster, but the government has been doing its best to maintain the economic activity by ensuring preventive measures against the outbreak uh, that is uh, less, uh, more, more flexible, I, I would say, for businesses to be able to operate. And fewer businesses have been suspended compared to the first uh, wave of infections. While this time around, the exports have continued to expand in line with international partners. So in at the same time, the timeline for vaccine development in Thailand and around the world has become uh, more, more or less uh, clearer with, with a plan for every country, leading to more uh, confidence uh, for a stable prospect for the economy of, of Thailand and for the region as well. So you have an infographic there, and uh, I believe on the um, uh, social media and uh, website of the Bank of Thailand, you can uh, search for more information regarding this uh, analysis on the estimation of the milder uh, economic impact uh, for this new wave. Another point is on the uh, vaccines, and the spokesperson had mentioned this, regarding the concern of uh, certain news reports around the world about the fatal um, side effects of persons receiving vaccines uh, in other countries, in for foreign countries. The Minister of Public Health has revealed that any vaccine submitted for approval in Thailand will be vigorously tested by the Food and Drug Administration and the Department of Medical Sciences before they will be released to the public. And hence the public can be rest assured that the procurement of COVID vaccines in Thailand will be safe. And as I mentioned before, the Prime Minister had reiterated this, that unless it is safe and unless it is tested, um, we will be, uh, be assured of this, uh, the safety of the vaccines. That's the most important uh, issue that we uh, take to heart regarding the procurement and distribution of vaccines in the future. So the first batch of vaccines, of course, will be approved for the medical personnel for the uh, emergency use. The, we have planned to efficiently regulate the use of vaccines and expecting to launch uh, the vaccination campaign for people in the country uh, in due course, perhaps, uh, of course, after the first batch, maybe around May or June. The, the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine is reported to be the uh, first vaccine 
that is approved by the FDA uh, this week. Meanwhile, just to call your attention to the uh, speech, the opening speech by the World Health Organization Director General at the 148th session of the WHO Executive Board. Uh, Dr. Tedros, the Director General of the WHO, underscored the need to address inequality among nations. Uh, this is regarding vaccines. And the prioritization, sorry, prioritization of those who are most at risk uh, for the inoculations. So just to put this in perspective, that of course it's like perhaps, personally I would say that it's like comparing to if you go shopping. Um, if you have money to buy things you need, shopping, but you don't really need it as other people, then that's something to, to consider. So perhaps just speaking on not in terms of um, differentiating between the needs of people because everybody would need a vaccination that would be very important and not to uh, differentiate or distinguish or discriminate at all uh, in terms of uh, developed countries or developing countries but just to take into consideration I think that's the, the, the gist the point of this uh, opening remark that inequality in terms of uh, access uh, is, is, is prevalent in, in, any, in anything that we see in the world and prioritizing, I'm sorry, that was a mouthful, <laughs> prioritizing uh, those who are most at risk for inoculation. That's, that's, that's very, uh, very uh, important. For Thailand, we have uh, in generally, generally um, set up that as prioritizing those who are in the medical profession, those who are at risk in the front lines, as well as the vulnerable groups, those in need with uh, health conditions, uh, the elderly, the vulnerable, and, and those, those groups. So that's, that's what I'm trying to reiterate and relate it, it and link it to the address by the World Health Organization Director General. So the Ministry of Public Health also stresses about the group of the elderly uh, as a high-risk group. So the Health Ministry reiterated that the elderly is, for us, for Thailand, uh, is a high-risk group and would uh, usually get severe complications after being uh, infected. And most are usually infected through family members. Some might uh, neglect strict uh, self-imposed uh, prevention measures at home after visiting risk, risk areas, you know, for the elderly. So advising for the public to respect uh, such measures, that is, it is the most effective uh, vaccine, in, in quotations, to help uh, prevent the elderly from being infected, the various important measures. At the same time, emphasizing the importance of nursing homes to implement stricter uh, prevention measures and prevent further transmission among the elderly. The various businesses in Thailand, such as restaurants, have also uh, been asked to cooperate and observe the prevention measures uh, strictly to help uh, stem the spread of the virus within our society. So with particular emphasis um, on uh, at-risk groups, the elderly groups in, in this regard. So just uh, so a few points before ending. <clears throat> that, of course, no, it's not a one-man show. Nothing is a one-man show in, in the COVID world. It requires the help of everyone, every sector of society to get through this tough time together. We have to join hands and do whatever we can. On, <coughs> excuse me, on screen soon, we'll be having a, an infographic uh, in English and in Myanmar uh, language on how migrant workers can keep themselves safe if their jobs are being affected by COVID. Now this infographic is among the various infographics created by the International Organization for Migration, or IOM, in co collaboration with uh, Thai, and, Thai local and, in, and other international agencies to provide workers with information and knowledge on COVID and how to better prevent uh, themselves uh, from uh, being infected. I encourage uh, everyone and those who uh, are employing uh, workers, migrant workers from our neighboring countries to make use of this information, uh, which can be found uh, on mitthai.com. I mentioned that yesterday in this website, as well as the website portal of the International Organization for my migration as well. You see on, on screen, uh, that's in Myanmar language, and it's also available in the other languages of our uh, neighboring countries. So, as always, stressing once again, everyone to wear your face mask, wash your hands uh, constantly, 
rest assured, when we come to the CCSA, when we have the many uh, CCSA meetings that uh, the spokesperson mentioned uh, this morning or in the, where the Prime Minister had, we always wear these uh, while we uh, discuss in our meeting. And only when I and Dr. Tui Sin or um, the other uh, spokespersons come to the podium, then, then we take off this very important uh, mask. So this is all I have for today. Um, thank you very much for your uh, attention. I hope you have a uh, fruitful and uh, healthy Tuesday, and we'll see you again tomorrow. Thank you, and sorry, Kap.